up here and bit of a total amateur at this game, you know. The boys make me look really bad. Uh, it's, it's just a different style of riding, balance and making your bike jump up, sit down and sometimes you're in mud, maybe half adapt to the wheel, so it's really hard to keep control. And you, I think all your muscles definitely work in a much harder way doing this riding than you would doing our riding. And uh, maybe our brains have to work more, but uh, I don't know. So the more training I do at this stage, it will be when I get on my own machine. We ride on a Sunday morning for like four or five hours every week, or on a Saturday, whichever suits everyone. And uh, we're making a big effort. We must try and win that British Championship this year. Plus going to try hard for all those road races and uh, I think I do think in the end in previous winters we've done train on it at all but this year hopefully it'll pay off even more. It'll be much easier to sit beside the fire tonight and watch Cornelius and Street or Amadeo instead of do this, but it's good with video recorders. You can record Cornelius and Street and Amadeo and still do this. The running is just to help up build up my stamina and my breathing and uh, then I do everything else in the gym to try and make the rest of the body work because there's no specific exercise that can help you ride a bike. You've got to do everything and more. Well, Philip, good to see you again. How did it go with the Northwest and how did you apply the techniques you practiced together? Yeah, it was um, obviously you need a perfectly clear head and be concentrated on what you're doing and uh, it's really good because I can totally relax before races now and not use up any uh, no access energy. You yeah. save everything yeah. until we need it. And right, yeah. Which definitely works a lot better yeah. because you've like, used half your energy up before the race starts. You've right, yeah. wasted time a little bit. Yeah. Well, Philip, uh, you, as you know, has uh, great potential and um, the ability to succeed is already there. And it's a matter of just uh, using more of his uh, mind, y using more of his whole self and his mind to, to get the results he wants. It makes you think positive and you've, I know what I can do, but it's just uh, controlling it and getting it all to work at the right time. You know, there's no sense in starting to be hyper and racing on the group. You know, with five minutes to go, you're just, you're wasting energy, you're wasting power, you're wasting everything. You know, if you can save all that and get it for the right time, there's times and places for doing everything and racing starts when the flag drops, you know, not half hour before. Mm -hmm.
Yes, they can carve out there and carve the carpet. You don't know if it's going to stop the fight from walking. See you next. We'll have to go out later. Mm -hmm. We're just doing this one first. How enjoyable is it to sort of get to this stage of the, in the early part of the season? You've been in short change forest and enduro bikes, now you're eventually the last night of the tarmac. How do you feel about that? Really good, and I think all that uh, motocross work has paid off. We're out there now, we've done like literally hundreds of laps, and uh, touch wood, we haven't had a mishap yet. You know, we've had slides, but um, we've corrected them and went on, and it means you're not rusty. Lots of boys have just get saddled in now on the last day of testing. And, um, but because I've been riding pretty constant during the winter, I seem to stay happy or pleased. I lost a few people last year, and uh, I feel we should have been in a better position in the British Championship at the end of the year. So uh, I think I'm probably more determined than I've ever been to win races. And we've done all the homework, we've done all the training. Everything that went wrong last year, we strengthened it this year and had to get it right, so uh, I can't do any more. When you eventually get to a grid, how much uh, advantage do you feel you'll have over the opposition? Well, hopefully you'll know you can go at least as fast with them, if not faster. And uh, I'm a bad practice test rider anyway because I always seem to see up a bit for the races, so hopefully if there's anything to go by, we can. I'm well pleased and I can go home happy. Honestly, how do you view the opposition in a race? What's your attitude towards them? Well, they're just like obstacles in the way. And your job is to try and win that race. And they're just all their numbers, they're just all their riders out there. They're the exact same as you. So you've got to try and beat them. How would you describe your relationship with the opposition? Yeah, I think I get on like, pretty good with most of them. The guys, the top riders, respect each other for what they do because they know how hard it is to be there and do that. But I think when it comes to the start of a race, um, the guy who keeps thinking here, this is my friend next door, is going to lose. You know, they're just everyone's after the same target on us to win. Well, <coughs> he's, he's two blocks it rolled into one, Philip. On the track, he, he's a bit of a menace and. Um, I don't mean that nastily, but he really is a, a tough egg. But off the track, he's such a different bloke completely. And uh, I think I get on. I think I get on with him to be honest better off the track than I do on the track. It's different with people like Brian Reid or Stephen Cullen, some other riders. But, but you don't seem to have a lot of warmth for your fellow riders. I mean, is, that, is that a totally unfair observation? Or uh, do, you, do you have a cold approach to it? Yeah, well, like some people would notice that if we know what they're looking for. But, um, yes, like they're out there to take your own. Like basically, the prize money is your wages, right? And you've got other people. Should they be your friend? Should they be their enemy, right? They're trying to take your wages, you know? And if someone in your job tries to take your wages, you're going to say, hey, boy, they're my wages, my you know? It's up to you to do something about it, you know, so you beat them, and that's how you do something about it. What do you feel are McCallum's qualities as a rider? Uh, I think it's just his, uh, just like, uh, aggression and adrenaline, and seems to kind of get him around really fast everywhere. How do you react to people about the comment I hear on the pit a lot? McCallum is a madman. Well, if they want to think that, that's okay, it makes my job easier. You know, um, maybe because they don't feel it different. It's lots of people ride circuits and uh, they ride them beyond their limit. So they think um, if they fall off, so what? You know, you don't get hurt. But they're not really in control. They've got there by going beyond all limits. But in my eyes, in my road racing, I've got there within limits. Of course, we've had to go to the edge, but uh, I suppose to live this long, we haven't gone over the edge.
Good man, yeah, that's good. Super like that. Good. I Phillips a good rider is the best bike in the world at the minute. And um, he's going to be the money beat. What do you think makes him so quick, especially on the roads? Phillips quick everywhere. It doesn't matter where he goes. If he goes to the mid on him or the cook down next week, he's going to be the same. He's going to be the money beat. And we just all try and beat him, and that's about it. He's a very individual, quite an aggressive uh, style. What are your views on that? He's very determined. Oh, he's very determined. You can even see to ride with him or to watch him, it doesn't matter. Like, and he's, he's quick everywhere and he's quick in every corner. Like, Philip is just no bad place. He is easy to live with. He's very useful around the house. He's a very house proud person. So he doesn't mind getting out the hoover or the duster or he like loves doing the washing. <laughs> Boys, I don't think that's a good idea. Like oh, don't don't fill him up stuff in the ground because you're not allowed to you're not to stack stuff in the ground. <laughs> really the thing he absolutely loves is washing the dishes. Nobody can do it better than him. He likes to shine his glasses. Well, he's a totally different person, really, at home. That's just not things that you would imagine of Philip if you met him at a race meeting. He's sort of one-tracked, I'm going to win this race, and um, doesn't think of anything else when he's at a race meeting at all. But, but as I say, when he's at home, he's just totally different. I can't believe it broke a cup. Project is coming along. You've been sent away to the Kigavan Historical Society. I want you to sort of, can you tell me some things about it or what's been happening or was it good fun or was it bad or was it hard work or who done all the writing? Who? Um, everybody done their own and then we put it on the computer. Can you tell me then why you picked me for this? Eh, uh, because you're really famous and everyone knows you and we were doing stuff about you before the competition came up and then we just decided to do you because we'd already started a project on you. Do we have anything in the classroom today that we can take a look at? Maybe then you two girls could show us on the wall uh, what you've got in your classroom. Okay. Right, where do we start? <laughs> well, um, Mrs. McCallum got us got us from men where he crashes them up and lays them out in the gate. Look at this shot here. Nearly fell off there, so it is. Mm -hmm. And that one. We're pleased to have you all here today. And it's good to see that Philip gives up of his own time uh, in the furtherance of road safety on the roads in Northern Ireland. Now, all I'm going to do this morning, for a few moments, I want to talk about observations, what we're going to do uh, whenever we're out on the motorcycles. Right? Uh, I have instructed for some time within the police and if at the end of that course I could encourage someone to think about what they're doing, look ahead, think of the potential dangers that you're in and ride, not necessarily defensively, but actually think about what the other motorist is going to do. On a motorcycle you will not survive the simple mistakes made by motors. You're vulnerable out there. Not sure we start actually, but when I was a bit younger, a good bit now, I was one of those crazy boys in the road on bikes and uh, I just went too fast, you know, that's the truth. I went too fast. I was very lucky probably still to have my license now and probably I'm even more lucky still to be alive. Like in the morning to try to get crazy speeds on the way to work and that's actually why, that is the truth. People think it's a joke but it's not. That's why I did start racing because I knew I'm going to die. You know, we all love going fast. You know, we go to our racing meeting and we, on the way home we think, 
for Joey Dunlop, you know. If we just can get it into moderation a bit, uh, it will help the whole motorcycle and, and in the end save lives, maybe. <laughs> I've never seen a police motorcycle move so quickly, <laughs> uh, and nor would I want to again. Um, <clears throat> but we had a good talk afterwards, uh, and again he just emphasised the importance of trying to keep things smooth, looking far ahead, um, giving yourself time to react, uh, and obviously being aware of other abuses around you. So it was a good day. It's like us, good, right? But the facts will just be a bit more to Really bumper and just shot her in the back end. So it's 
the car was like spinning all the bumps and ripping itself up. So that was it from the last three or four laps. It's just well, from halfway through the race, there's no traction left, so you can't go any faster or you fall off. So the thing is to try and just keep up the pace. I'm a pretty aggressive rider, and uh, I was uh, maybe offended and insulted a lot of people trying to win in years gone by, you know, and uh, because that's just in my nature to try hard to win races, you upset people, you know, and people don't forget things. When you do something wrong, you know, if you chop someone up on the road on the way to work, they don't forget, you know, and so it takes a lot of um, a lot of persuading and a lot of work to get over one or two things that happened in the past. How much do you feel you've matured since those wild early days? Well, I think it's like everything's an experience, all writers. Uh, even probably our own famous Joey was pretty erratic in his younger day. And uh, just this last, you learn as you get older, and it's just, it is true, like, you know, I could think, like, years ago, I could have, like, went fast, faster and safer, quicker. but. Uh, you just learn the time to conserve energy and the time to use it, and just it's getting a whole lot into perspective. What's the problem, Philip? Aye, they wouldn't let me start the warm up lap because it was late, right? The fuel pipe trap, that's what happened. Now they say I've got to start from pit lane. shape and seemingly be able to keep it like that and get it back in uh, while the bike is bucking and wheezing and, and the road is anything but smooth um, he doesn't seem to bother him it bothers those around him perhaps sometimes and maybe that's the problem uh, he seems to have the stability to be able to keep the head down and keep going he's all arms uh, if you've noticed his ra racing style he's hunched over and the eyes have it uh, he's a very determined man but the results show for themselves I mean you cannot win five races at the northwest and have so many successes with the TT uh, and put it all down to luck. Philip, well, uh, rather surprisingly, perhaps strangely for a, a motorcyclist, a racing rider, I believe you've an interest in, in poetry. I mean, where does that come from? Well, it sort of comes from a boss I used to work with for 10 years, you know, and uh, sort of, I think I baffled him a bit sometimes. And, uh, so he, he used to quote this poem to me, so I had to learn it in the end to get him back. And it was a, it was a poem by Oliver Goldsmith, and the title was The Village Schoolmaster. And it's, just, it's a very long poem, but there's only a small section from it. It's, uh, it goes, uh, With words of learned length and thundering sound, Amazed the gazing rustics gathered round, And still they gazed, and still the wonder grew, How that small head could carry all he knew. <laughs> 